So um, this study was actually a, a part of a, a larger study that was um, assessing patient uh, convenience, inconvenience um, relating to uh, split dosing compared to uh, single dosing of bowel preparation. And, and, and as a consequence of that, we also looked at outcomes um, involved following the, the preparation as, as far as uh, bowel cleanliness and, and polyp detection rates. The preparations themselves, as far as um, the actual you know, liquid that was consumed, um, they, they were identical. Um, but uh, the difference obviously being um, the, the timing of the dosing. Uh, the single dosing uh, preparation began 6 p.m the evening prior to the uh, colonoscopy. Um, and that was consumed basically um, over, uh, over an hour from, from 6 to 7 p.m., um, consuming a fourth of the liter um, every 15 minutes being the goal. Uh, and then following that, um, they were, it was recommended that they begin the, the second dose at 7.30 p.m. for another hour. Um, and then for the split dosing, the preparation began in the identical same way uh, at 6 p.m. the evening prior to the procedure for that initial hour and that initial one liter dose. Uh, and then the second dose of the split dose preparation was to begin four hours prior to the procedure the following day. So as far as the patient population that we chose, it was really just um, all patients that were scheduled for routine outpatient colonoscopies. Um, uh, and uh, the, the indications for that colonoscopy uh, you know, uh, varied, whether it was you know, routine surveillance for inflammatory bowel disease or uh, whether it was you know, routine screening surveillance at you know, 50 years of age. Uh, but these were all uh, routine uh, outpatient uh, patients. Uh, The significant result to us anyway um, we, uh, was that uh, sessile serrated polyps were found to be uh, uh, found uh, four times more frequently in the split dosing than in the single dosing. Uh, this was, uh, as far as we're aware, this has never been shown before, um, at least uh, certainly in comparison uh, while comparing single and split dose preparations. And so that, the results of that were striking to us. And that kind of boils down to the heart of the matter is that um, the, the incidence as far as um, you know, different studies um, is actually varied very widely. Um, and um, uh, prevalence, uh, it's averaged you know, less than 2%. Uh, but this is very, uh, has been determined to be very uh, operator dependent. Uh, a lot of different studies have shown very wide different results and different endoscopists have shown very different rates. Um, but as far as you know, the significance of sessile serrated polyps themselves, 20% um, of colon cancers um, are believed to result um, from sessile serrated polyps. 80% um, 80, 80 um, other being largely from adenomas, which are uh, other precancerous lesions. Uh, but you know, there's still 20% of cancers that are coming from these sessile serrated polyps. Uh, and they're actually, uh, these polyps are uh, responsible for a large amount of interval cancers. And by that we mean cancers that uh, are found um, after a patient's initial colonoscopy whether that you know, initial colonoscopy might have found you know, an adenoma, a polyp, um, something of that nature, or, or they didn't find anything. They recommended uh, routine follow-up colonoscopy five to 10 years later, whatever the, the interval that was recommended. And at that point, they find cancer. Um, a, a large proportion of those are from sessile serrated polyps. Uh, and that's because these lesions, um, these sessile serrated polyps, uh, at least we believe they're um, the reason that the bulk of these interval cancers are from sessile serrated polyps, they're uh, flat lesions, they're in the, more commonly found in the proximal colon, so um, you know, farther, farther into, the, into the colon, uh, and they tend to blend in with the mucosa, and they have, 
very ill-defined borders. Uh, so uh, this is you know a very um, important in terms of you know uh, colonoscopy cleanliness and, and making sure that the bowel is appropriately prepared to better to locate these lesions. And this is just you know my theory, but you know if, if you're doing a split dosing, you're getting you know the bulk of the uh, the nitty gritty, the, the feces out of the way after the, the first dose the evening before, and then uh, the, the second dose being performed you know, four to six hours uh, prior to the procedure doesn't, doesn't allow uh, you know, adequate time for, for any other buildup that might happen afterwards, but that's you know, just my own personal theory. <laughs> The U.S. Multi-Society Task Force already recommends uh, split dosing over single um, uh, single dosing for bowel preparation uh, as far as uh, in terms of uh, better uh, quality of bowel preparation as well as higher adenoma detection rates. Um, and this, our study uh, found you know, a fourfold increase in uh, sessile serrated polyp detection rates. Um, Basically, it just shows another important quality factor um, in regards to uh, improved outcomes as far as uh, split dosing is concerned. So uh, just another um, reason to advocate for split dosing for, for patients everywhere.